Hi, Leah. My beautiful, one of my oldest songwriting friends. I have to call you Haywood, not Leah, so everybody you do to find you. <laughs> You're going to have to get used to that, babe. Yeah. No. It's Haywood now. It's Haywood now. But to me, you'll always be Leah. Absolutely. So we're having this conversation, and I love that we didn't talk a lot about it. So it'll be mm. sort of spontaneous. Yeah. And everybody is going to have some context because I'm going to introduce our relationship in the body of my blog. Do you hear that um, bird chirping? Maybe I should close the window. No, the bird's good. We love the birds. Those are good. So do. you're in your studio. You're yep. in the room that you built in, in your yard where we yep. had so much fun. And yeah. where we started working. Actually, we were working in your house. Mm -hmm. When I had a little person in my life. And you yep. were like, I can't believe you can do this with a little person in your life. Totally. You're uh, forever my inspo, babe. I what? You're forever my inspo of how to do it all. <laughs> Bringing the grocery shopping over, stacking it in the fridge. That's what I would yeah. do. And then sometimes I would forget it and we wouldn't have yeah. it in your fridge. <laughs> and, leave my, and leave us poor starving artists with it. It was perfect. <laughs> Leah, I am just, I am really so in awe of you. And not because you said you're in awe of me, because it's always like, other people's money, other people's stuff, other people's talent, other people's voices. I mean, you blew me away when I first met you because you just, you, you were so self-contained and you finally put out this beautiful record, Pressure on My Heart, which title cut, I can't get out of my head. And I know you've been through a lot. I mean, yeah. that first, this isn't your first album because you, you were making records a long time ago and then you started writing for other people. But for me, I feel like it was the first album for the current incarnation of who you are. And Big time. So what made it the right time to do this? I didn't, I didn't choose the timing, you know, I know that sounds so cheesy, but like the timing chose me, I guess, you know what I mean? Like, I, I, you know, I, um, I did, always want to do another record and I it was about probably seven or eight years ago in Australia I was driving on this windy road coming back from the ocean somewhere and it it hit me okay now's the time and um I think I wanted something autonomous I wanted something uh, like a declaration of independence because I've been co-writing and collaborating for my entire career and um declaration the, of independence or declaration Declaration okay. and decoration. Decoration works too. <laughs> and so, um, decorating my independence. Exactly, all of the things, all of the things. So, basically, I um, I knew that I was going to do another record at that point. It was so, the feeling was like that first feeling I had when I signed to Sony in Australia, where I had that. <gasps> you kind of that that it inhale where it's like oh my gosh it's happening and and I had that excitement again and um and a lot of signs at the time pointed me to doing that um so I embarked on that and uh and I started making tracks and I came up with melodies but there was something not connecting I started writing lyrics I had this I had this kind of lyric book and and there's there's something in my brain that hadn't that hadn't switched on about how I was to write my story. And, um, and, and so I was writing all these lyrics and everything felt just contrived and trying to be too cryptic, too arty, too cool, you know? And, and, and I was like, I was like, this does not feel authentic. And I, and I was bummed that I couldn't kind of take it to the finish line, but I, I was okay. Cause I was still working for other artists and, you know, all that kind of stuff. So I basically just, lost interest I guess because it wasn't inspired but I still knew it was something I was going to do and then um it was a it was three or four years later that I got this song in its entirety you know a full chorus melody lyric track which song, by, what's which, that which song was it pressure this was New York okay I can relate yeah yes exactly so New York um was the first song that I got and it was the first style of 
lyric writing. It was very free flowing. It was um, it, it was kind of rapid fire. Um, I don't know, and it was conversational, and it wasn't cryptic, but it was set, it was phrased in a cool cooler way than I had been doing it before. I just the pieces were coming together, and basically, I was like, okay, this is it. This is my sound, and I think also. Yeah. I remember seeing you when you had been spending time in New York for weeks at a time or months at a time when you yeah. felt like you were just discovering it and you were really excited about that environment. So that made I just exactly very inspiring, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, very heavy, like true, you know, uh, true OG artist lean in New York. You know what I mean? And and so um, tell me what somehow OG means again. You told me the other original, day, I'm like, so original, original gangster. <laughs> yes, that's what I, which, <laughs> which you I are the OG, do. babe. You, okay. you really are. Please continue. Oh my God. I write that down. I write all this stuff down so I don't forget. Write it down. That's yeah. your new song title, OG. Um, so basically, um, I, I can't, it's really hard to explain for most people. It, it, they would probably just hear that as another song. For me, it was an absolute different approach in songwriting. And I don't feel like I'd ever been kind of lyric strong in songwriting sessions. I feel like my, um, my expertise were more musical and me melodic. And, and I discovered in this process that, wow, I actually do have some pretty good lyrics in me that just haven't seen the light of day or, or had the right kind of conduit. Well, when you're writing for, like when we wrote for other people, mm -hmm. that's a different kind of sensibility than when you're writing for yourself. And when you get into writing for other people for years on end, I think that it takes some adjustment to yeah. really say to yourself, well, what do, what do I feel? I'm not putting yes. words in somebody else's mouth. I'm actually yeah. putting words in my mouth and who am I now, right? Totally. Um, and, and I also think sometimes with collaboration, we become too um, we over analytical. So with my project, I didn't really, if it felt good and it came out right the first time, I didn't, I didn't ever overanalyze. I didn't go back with a fine tooth comb and try and change stuff. I just was like, that's it. That's right. I made quick decisions. And I think when you're in a room full of three or four other people or two people, everyone's overanalyzing everything. Does the rhyme feel right? Does the da-da-da feel right? You know, do we want to, is that word to, is it singing right? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like all of these different ways that we, that we like overanalyze things and lose the original spirit of what we were trying to say. And I did not do that with my thing. I just like, nah, just banged it out. And for every song on the record, it came as a, as one inspired idea melody lyric um track concept in my head it came as one full inspired idea and then from there I really just the work came when it was fleshing out the verses and the and the bridge and you know stuff like that where but the meat and potatoes was there just like that so I think maybe once you got comfortable in your own zone because you wrote I checked all the credits on the songs I mean there were very few co-writes thank you very much no <laughs> I think that's great. There was, there I mean, was actually only, I think there's only one, one co-write. I mean, my favorite co-writer in the world is just myself, me, myself, and I. I don't do it all that yeah. often, or I'd never do it all the time because I would fall into the same rut. But you have yes. all these production skills, and I feel like you have less boundaries than I do because you're you're like, you're a great producer, Leah. And Thank you. You know, I was thinking about this when I was writing the little um, preface to this conversation and I thought it's great to see a woman doing this and, you know, I hear myself say that and I want to go shut up. It's women aren't the, there sh it shouldn't be like exceptions, but yeah, I know there are so many more of them than us that when I yeah. see a woman just own it and many do, but not mm. as many and yep. not just own it but do it well like you you sing and i watched that um reel that i'm going to include on this blog about you talking about what was it back for the on, on instagram you posted something about how you produce oh, the, oh. the track and how things build i mean you were always like that 
Yeah. Um, yeah. I felt listening to this record that I know you have personally gone through a big emotional thing, but mm -hmm. it sounds to me from when we talked last week, you were sort of clear on what you needed to do. But yep. this record to me felt like a bit of a metamorphosis. It felt like you were going into the depths of that situation, but mm -hmm. also you were trying to party. Totally. To, to distract yourself from all the heaviness. So there's yep. a lot of fun tracks. I mean, I felt like there was a lot of Katy Perry on this record, which makes sense because she recorded one of your songs recently. There's, um, there, there, I heard some, is it Heim or Haim? Haim or Haim? I say Haim. I say Haim But too. I've heard it said both ways. Yeah. We're, Let's we're, ask them. We're saying it phonetically. My daughter would go, ma. Oh, I know, Ma. I know, same. Um, and I heard some like Kate Bush, and there was a song I wrote down, wow. like You and Me was a little Kate Bushy and a little yeah. Butler. You yes. Know, I really felt Thank like, you. Yeah, it was a really Huge. beautiful um, composite of the fun stuff. And then, okay, now I came back from the party and I'm putting on my headphones and how am I feeling before I go to sleep kind of stuff. Yeah, and I think like, um, I'm the, t I, I am a naturally pretty buoyant person. Like I'm not, I'm not a dark, deep, depressed person. I, I wake up happy pretty much every day, which, which is a gift. And I'm very grateful for that. Um, and, and even, uh, you know, I'm resilient. I bounce back from, from, from heavy situations pr pretty quickly. Um, and, you know, so I wanted to weave that light through, through even, even like a, you know, potentially dark lyric. I, I, I love the juxtaposition of feeling hope, even though you're singing something heartbreaking. Mm -hmm. and, and that's always the way I feel. I always feel hope, even if I'm heartbroken, I, I can see light at the end of the tunnel. So I wanted that to be conveyed. I, I don't, I, I don't just want to write dark songs for the sake of it. I know it's a cool thing to do, but I, I that would be inauthentic for me. So, right. I, you know, I wanted to weave that hope and that light sort of through the, through the dark times, you know. Yeah, I think you did. I think you, you did. And I think just sonically, the sound of your voice, it was, I mean, I listened to it straight through. I loved, I've been thinking about God. Because Thanks, I always, I haven't, I'm not like, religious i'm sort of spiritual and i believe in the universe and i believe you 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 make who your god is you know you've mm -hmm. been a little bit more um religious than i we we never really got into it that much but when i saw yeah. the title i thought wow what's this going to be like yeah and right really a song that everybody can relate to about gee do i only ha ask for help when i need it or totally do i give gratitude even when i don't yeah, I mean, it's always it's always thoughts and prayers when when something tragic is going on, isn't it? But you know, it's never thoughts and prayers when everything's great. And I think that's where I'd gotten to the point in my life. I'm like, wow, you know, like, um, but for my um, the way I relate to spirituality and the God that I know, I I felt like I was just not a great friend. You know what I mean? And so, but it is it, the song is also kind of a question. You know, it's like, God, are you out there? And I think everyone feels like that. You know what I mean? It's a huge question that I think every single person on the planet has asked themselves at, at a certain time. And whether you believe it or not, you can continue to ask that question when you're going through dark times. Are you really there? You know, so. I talked to somebody a couple of weeks ago who didn't have a question about it. They absolutely knew there was one. Yeah. I feel that way, but like it doesn't mean... It, I feel that way, but it doesn't mean that you don't question it at times in your life. Right, right. You know, and and it's like even even if you know the God that you believe in is there, you might say, where are you? Because mm -hmm. I'm not, I don't see any of you in this. Like what's mm -hmm. happening? You know what I mean? It's like that moment you're on your knees yeah. going, I need help. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So I love bleeder. I wrote down this lyric. I loved now I'm just a bleeder. You're a lever. I thought I was a keeper. 
I love that. Yeah. And I love how you, so how long, so, so you got the idea to make the record driving, I think yes. before, which I believe driving is a great mind freer. Yeah, we're totally. We're staring at paper, we're, staring, we're just like, everything's moving and it makes our yeah. flow flow. Yes. Um, yeah. but then you said it took like years to come up with New York. Mm -hmm. And then how long did it take to make the record, which not only did you write all the songs mostly by yourself, you yeah. produced it yourself. Yeah. All, most of all the vocals. So how long did it take for the whole? Journey? Well, before I got signed, I had, I had probably about four songs already in the can produced mixed everything and then um I spoke to my manager and I said I'm gonna put this these records out and he said well let's just put your palm tree so I signed to palm tree the label um and I think it was like I was just gradually making them throughout last year because I kind of said to the label hey I don't really want to put out this huge body of work within the first three months of releasing anything under my artist name literally starting from zero listeners like I don't know if I want to just like come out like let's just build it and just put songs out so I kind of did it as I went um I did have about four or five songs in the can before we started sorry my low battery on my phone shoot oh, no, oh, we'll be fine we'll be fine so yeah I did have um I did kind of make them as I went um yeah that's that's How pretty much with that once you got started it's like i know when i was writing my book every time i thought of a new chapter or a new story i was just like in this this i just disappeared you know yeah disappeared into telling it and that's how i i am i feel with songs and i think you probably do too especially when we're alone that mm. you get into your head and it's just the best feeling it is the best feeling but I also like I really because the songs were sort of coming as like a little download or whatever I I made a decision early on that I didn't want to make my own music and for it to be laborious so I I, I wanted it, everything that I do as an artist to be inspired and I know there are disciplines that you that you have to enact in that process but I didn't want to um, to sit down at a piano to put a date in my diary oh, I'm writing for Leah's project today and sit down and try and do a piano riff and da, da 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 like I wanted to have the song before I went in the studio so it was more like a process of patience and and I I sort of decided to myself that I was going to wait I was going to wait for the song and I wasn't going to force the song and I know that's such a philosophical way to approach it but my best songs, even in co-writing situations, have usually come out of just something coming. And and there is something to be said for waiting and just being patient, you know. And and that's what I did with my project. I waited until the songs come came, you know. Well, our, our mutual friend, may he be resting peacefully, John Lind. It was a John yes. Lindism that I practice so much more now that he's gone because I've seen it in writing. He always said, when in doubt, don't and then yeah more will be revealed so wait but i think it's mm. important to just get in front of your instrument every day and say i'm here what have you got for me right there's nothing then you just go back the next day go and live yeah exactly but, and and i've gotten into a habit when I, i'll never really work for more than an hour i get so like oh my god my eyes are glazing over whether i'm oh i love that story or a blog or i'm at the piano i just go go for a walk you know just yeah. go for a walk go eat some lunch just get away from it and then come yes. back and it's like mornings are unbelievable just so mm -hmm. your brain is empty and fresh and yeah. and, and you might have just dreamt something that night if you fall asleep thinking about a song you're going to be mm. it in your sleep leah you have two babies that are not babies anymore because i remember when i had that baby you sort of like not laughed at me but you're like i don't know how she does this oh, i just could never do it oh my god 
and now it's it's wild how are you how are you i mean my mine are like wow seven and a half and nine going on teenagers it's it's insane like there's a point in a i've never had boys so in a little girl's life where they literally and it's definitely below under 10 where they tr- they transition into this wanting to be a big girl and it is the cutest thing ever. Uh, I'm just obsessed. But, yeah, I've, I've managed to find a happy medium and, and I have purposely had the girls together. I was like short-term pain, long-term gain, have them together so that they can be best friends and kind of entertain each other. And, and that's kind of how it is. So I have managed to keep working, you know, f- from my inspiration here you know seeing it done way before I did I think it's good for our children to see us manifesting our dreams right agreed absolutely Um, so social media thoughts yeah do it very well well you know I'm signed to a label so there is a big push for all the social media stuff um I mean I'm with every other artist out there that that is all about the art you know it's it's um kind of soul sucking it's 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 not a time waster but it feels like a time waster it's like every it'll take me a day to shoot and cut stuff together and because I'm so DIY I mean I'm not at the point where I have a full team now following me around with cameras and cutting everything up and what you got like a you know BTS by the end of the day kind of thing I'm very much I mean even and this is this was always my dream to be so creatively self-sufficient. Like I come up with all my video concepts, I style myself, I, I know what I want to right. present myself as. And and even though that's such a blessing to have all that creative freedom, it's um it's a huge undertaking. Right. So me? social media, yeah, and the social media thing obviously plays into all that. There's it's just oh. part of the part of the animal this these days, you know, and um I have kind of embraced it. I, I've just kind of like given into it. It's like it is what it is and it is a necessary evil. And and I think just as long as I'm making content that feels authentic to me, um, you know, I, I, I love involving my kids in what I do because I, you know, the first time around when I was signed to a major label, there was a lot of um, kind of suppressing different parts of my life to appear a certain way. And, and I, I just like, I really want to, be my authentic self now and if people love it they love it if they don't they don't but at least I know that I'm going out as who I am and I don't have to hold in it hold hold up any pretenses you know I I see you as completely authentic I'm so tired of social media but then I followed you last week and then you kept coming I'm like why do I keep seeing Lee I'm like oh because I But I love your, I think your Instagram is really pretty and I do see you as really authentic and I know you have to go, but also I think maybe your girls got old enough so that when they're toddlers, you couldn't have done this, Leah. No, I couldn't have. That's right. That's right. Exactly. I absolutely would not have had the bandwidth. No way. But I think you're really balancing it so well and Mm -hmm. we have to... You asked me last week, let's write a song. And um, yes, there's so many, I have so many reservations about doing that. Not with you with just like, yeah, f- for so many reasons that I talk about in the pretext here. Yeah. But you said, I don't care about those reasons. Let's do it. Cause we love it. So yeah, that's right. And it's like, we don't, you know, well, I think we're both, you know, in a position now where we don't have to do it for business right you know we can actually just do it for the love of it and if it sucks we don't have to walk away feeling like we just lost a day oh my gosh you know how am I gonna well, I would up? never feel that I would ne- yeah. I, I never write with anybody whose company I don't adore anymore yeah yeah totally that's done. totally that's done do you own your masters you have a label uh, well I'm fine so so they own the master yeah, they do they, they do. do they gave me a good deal though and honestly okay. like I you know I wasn't I was just grateful to be in a situation like that where I I actually had a budget to do things and I you know wouldn't have been in that situation otherwise so I I feel extremely grateful and I feel like um you know even how 
much the project's grown just in a year, I, I would not have been able to do that on my own, I don't think. Yeah. So I, I'm just so grateful, you know. But I also think, like, back on what you were saying before about you and me getting in the studio and writing just for the fun of it, I stuff. do. Exactly. And I do, like, I, I said this to you on Friday night, I do feel like the OG songwriters the ones that had the 20 million records sold that had the number one airplay sold you know like I was sat, I was telling Ross Golden this morning I feel like the songwriting business is so oversaturated now with people that actually if they sat in a room on their own could not write a song from beginning to end on their own and that is I feel like a little bit of that sort of traditional art of songwriting has been lost it's just like um you know you've got a hype girl in the room a hype guy in the room you've got someone that just brings a vibe to the room and they get an equal share and that's fine like I totally get the point of it but I also feel like how sad there's all of these people competing to get in a room and yet if you ask them to sit down behind a curtain on a piano and write a song they would have not a hope in that's a whole other conversation yeah love you know what I'm saying yes exactly so I feel like so I feel like artists are even be me using your samples, you know, like I feel like artists are going back to this people that were making the big records, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I feel that it's way. a theory. I hate theory. to be judgy. I, um, I always think of people who can sit down and write a song on their own, who are self-contained as, as, writers and artists who are more interested in because yes. it's all them. It's yeah. all their their thought. It's not being diluted. And and then if And I think actually that also might be the difference between a songwriter and an artist. I think someone that can sit down and write a song on their own from beginning to end is, is an artist. They're an artist. I I believe that. I feel yeah. That. I'm more yeah. interested in that. Yes. I'm more yeah. interested in that. When I see 10 writers on a song, it's like, I don't know who contributed to this. Yeah. I don't know whose mm-hmm. thought this was. Does it sound good? Does it make me tap my foot? You know, maybe. But yeah. But when I listen to a whole album, I want to hear the journey of one totally. experience. That's and right. It matters to me. And I, and I don't expect mm-hmm. it to matter to everybody. And, mm-hmm. you know, no, I agree. Same with me. So, yeah, love I love you. you. Thank you for doing this. Thanks for having Come me. Safely, wherever you're going, and I I'll will be later, and we'll make a plan. And okay, I love found it. you again, Leah. Me too, you're babe. Like, it was it was full out. circle. And you're like a mile full away. Circle. A mile away, and we saw each other in Parche. It was meant to be, babe. And that was it? And that was it. <laughs> The rest is history. I love you. See you, babe.